All right, so the video I'm about to watch came out October 19th, 2023. This is just, a, I don't know how much of the actual uh, news conference this is. It's from Forbes Breaking News. It is Sarah Huckabee, the governor of Arkansas, signing an executive order that the title says bans woke words from state government. So I want to see what is being said. We got a whole crew. Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us. It's great to stand up here with some of the most influential and amazing women from across our state. We are all here to say, frankly, that we've had enough. Enough trying to erase women and girls, enough denying our biological differences from men, and enough of the craziness that is taking over our country. I just want to stop here. Um, I don't know where she's necessarily going, but ignoring the biological differences between different sexes. I can't say I've never seen that, but I would say that that's a very small population of people. Most people are talking about gender identity, not about biological differences. Um, we know that there are biological differences. There are far more biological differences just than just the sexes, but of course those have some major impacts on things like uh, birthing, right? Uh, whether or not you can get pregnant, you'd have to have a, a uterus and you know everything else that goes along with it, right? So... I, I'm going to see what, what, what's going on. I've had the honor of being both the first woman and the first mother to serve as the governor of Arkansas. Before that, I was the first mother and the only the third woman to serve as the White House press secretary. Because of that, I came into this role. With That's why her name is so, oh my goodness. It feels like the Trump era was so long ago. Um, right. I was like, has she always been governor? But no, no. Um, the press secretary, I remember now. Yep. <laughs> With a few pretty unique experiences. Among them is giving birth to three amazing kids. That experience underscored to me that a woman's perspective is important and fundamentally different from a man's. Nowadays, though, only conservatives seem to be making that point. On the left, women... Is it conservatives only making that point? Um, I'm pretty sure it is liberals uh, and progressives and such who have tried to uh, spawn regular conversations about uh, including women into the workforce more, uh, representative into STEM, into technology, computer sciences, politics, representation in Congress. Those all seem like very big liberal movements. Okay, not just conservative talking points. And have taken a back seat to political correctness. It's why Senator Irving and Representative Barker had to pass the Fairness in Women's Sports Act to defend our girls across the state. They're using nonsense words to erase women and girls, and more importantly, to erase our voices and our experiences. Today, we're taking a stand against woke nonsense. What frankly started as a fad among a few grad students has seeped down into corporations, the healthcare industry, and increasingly state government. It's demeaning to women and it needs to stop. In a moment, I'll sign an. I really hope it's not generally demeaning to women, right? If at all, ever. I know that people can say some things that could be hurtful. Um, and I would acknowledge that uh, there are women that I know who feel like this is in part losing some of their story and their struggle uh, just in general in politics. But by and large, even those folks identify 
fights for things like civil rights, for accuracy in language, for understanding some of these things is better if everyone can come along than if only certain groups can. But I'll leave that to a different conversation with different people at the forefront. But just to be clear, there's, I would say there's something there, but not, not to the degree in which uh, Sanders is mentioning. An executive order banning a number of all sorts of ridiculous words from state government documents. Those include words like pregnant people, laboring person, birth giver. Pregnant people? That is... How is that problematic language? Okay, I want to see what this executive order actually says, but we're going to get to the video. ...and several other nonsense terms that have cropped up in recent years. Some on the left will accuse us of being nitpicky, that Arkansas should just lay down and accept the cultural revolution without complaint. I say it's the exact opposite. It's the left that decided that woman is a dirty word. It's the left that decided we needed to toss out basic biology and basic grammar along with it. I think they're just mad that conservatives are starting to fight back. And they better get ready because we're just getting started. In Arkansas, was it banned to use the word woman? I mean, this is just a U.S. law. I'm hoping that this is a direct uh, quote from the Arkansas Code. You have uh, every physician health care provider attending pregnant women. That's from 2020. Okay, so I don't think it was banned. Um, just all this video coming up. You know what? Just to just for giggles, what does the Liberty Beacon say? I don't know how and in any, well, I mean, first of all, any term is invented technically speaking, but this would indicate like pregnant woman, pregnant person. Women are people. So I can't see that being that that's tough because technically pregnant person is is actually more accurate. Um, but we'll get to the executive order. I mean, even the fact that woman refers to an adult uh, female, that would mean that people who are not adults legally, so anyone under the age of 18, isn't actually represented by that term either, but they can get pregnant. Ah, okay, back to the video. Thank you for being here, and thank you to the amazing women that are standing up here with me. I'll sign this executive order. We'll hear a few words from Dr. Chandler, and I'll be happy to take a few questions. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Kay Chandler. I'm pleased to be Arkansas Surgeon General, and I'm a practicing obstetrician gynecologist here in Little Rock. I've been serving women of all ages since 1997, but the governor's executive order doesn't require a medical degree to understand. It's just common sense. As I was taught in medical school, and actually have known since I was five years old when I happened to be looking through my mother's nursing school textbooks and ran into some embryology textbooks, women give birth. What's interesting about this is that um, I was just listening to a podcast about how nobody knew certain things about women's anatomy because books weren't written on it and they weren't studied, right? Uh, so for instance, like it was thought that both men and women had testes up until like 1867, I want to say. Yeah, thinking that Mother's milk was made from refined, transferred menstrual blood in the past. Oh, there was an actual, okay, so it wasn't as, as clear as I thought. Um, in the 18th century, there was a debate on 
whether it's all just sperm or if there are uh, like ovaries involved. Oh, weird. It was one side or the other. So they all thought it was sperm or they thought it was all in ovaries. Wow. Okay. It's a crazy little article. Anyways, it looks like all the way into the 1800s, it was still a mystery about exactly how this whole process took place. But anyways, that's just a, a, a side note, really. Um, I just thought it was important to point out that science hasn't always agreed and that even today there's science that doesn't necessarily agree with the kind of simplistic idea that there are just two sexes, two different chromosomes, like XX and XY, right? That's two of each, but one's an X and one's a Y, and that makes a woman as XX and a man as XY, right? Like that idea is for most people, but there's Last time I checked, at least 14 different variations of X chromosomes and Y chromosomes possible in human existence that complicate that story. Anyhow. Today, that has somehow become controversial, but it shouldn't be. Governor Sanders' executive order is smart on a number of counts. It stands up to those who try to erase women in the name of political correctness. In this administration, I know our governor won't let political correctness get in the way of science. I, I'm really still curious um, if anyone's going to ask her, but where was the erasure? Because like using those terms, wasn't, it doesn't look like it was mandatory. Just from the laws we looked up, the one law that I, I managed to find from Arkansas, um, it looks like it was, and, and no one was pointing to that. So I wonder if they'll answer that during press conference questions. Thank you. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to take a couple. Are there Well, there's always an urgency to. So um, I don't know if it's uh, very audible, but the person asked from the audience, uh, why specifically like pregnant people? Where was it showing up? Uh, where is the sense of urgency coming from? You know, that, those kinds of questions. Doing the right thing. Look, I, I wish that we didn't have to write and have executive orders like this, but because of the growing trend uh, that continues to seep into all areas of our life, we feel like it's important. We have seen specific instances that have happened in state government and been reported in other places in state government. And so at no what was time reported? will I apologize for defending women and standing up for the differences between men and women. Does it matter if there's one? Is that not enough? Okay, so that was that was the question that was asked was, is there, you know, so more than one or, or what not the case. And then this is kind of her response. How many times should a woman have to be insulted before we stand up and say, we've had it? Like it shouldn't even take one time. Uh, but one instance to me is enough for us to stand up for women and say that we can do better and we will. I mean, I'm not keeping a running tally, but I have seen. Okay, so these are good questions because it, they ask, like, what's the scope of the problem, right? Is it point zero 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 one percent of people? Um, because you, one of the things, especially in the Constitution, is, right, that we shouldn't really be making laws based upon very small or transient uh, problems, right? Like the Constitution and, and the legal existence of the United States should really be about stability and about kind of big problems. If there was just one person, although that's still to her credit, right? Like, hey, is one, one's too many, right? But we get that same question in reverse um, from the media when it's something like unarmed black men killed, right? They'll be like, well, it's only like eight or 23 or 40 or whatever the number is that they're going to use to indicate that it's not that big of a problem. That is people dying. 
And in this case, it could be one instance potentially of someone being like, hey, I'm upset with the language that was used. It's not required anywhere. So I'm still again confused. What's the what's the problem that needs to have a legal response? Seen one specific instance, and we've had a set a number of other instances that have been reported to our office. What uh, specifically at the health department. Okay, so I mean, it doesn't. I only really like in the, the first page of results, and I am not finding anything about gender neutral terms coming up, the government getting reports. So, I mean, it's only a couple of days. Maybe they'll provide some information here in the near future, but I wouldn't hold my breath. As I just said, we've seen uh, specific instances at the health department and several others that have been reported. It's, it's not that they're offensive, it's that they are scientifically wrong. And that's a different thing. There's something. Okay, so it's, we're getting some clarity here. It's not that it's offensive, it's that they're scientifically wrong. Pregnant people is scientifically wrong. It seems incorrect just using English. But okay. Different about whether your feelings got hurt versus something that is just factually incorrect. You said they were insulting. I think it is insulting to women to define them as something other than what they are and to take away experiences that are so specific to them that cannot be uh, created just by saying uh, them into existence. Because there's a difference between what is right and what is wrong, what is factual and what is not. It's not just. So I don't know if that was audible because not even Google's uh, translate picked it up. But the last question there was essentially, you know, how does Sarah Huckabee kind of contend this idea about the political correctness that it's, you know, going against political correctness? Uh, which is designed to like not hurt people's feelings, right? Versus this kind of banning of words when it's about being insulting. So he's they're just looking for a logical kind of connection between the two. And you can hear the like kind of back and forth as Sarah Huckabee, although to her credit, is coming up with some words to say that actually come out of sentences. There, there's a little bit of a back and forth there, right? Like she's going from it's insulting to no, 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 it, we're talking about science here. We're talking about what is factual, what is right, what is wrong, that kind of stuff. Um, but there's so far no evidence produced about what's going on, right? About anyone being hurt by these words uh, in any kind of like legal or political or economic uh, sort of way. Just political correctness. It's literally the difference of what is accurate and what isn't. which actually I think underscores the exact point. Because we have a federal government that is taking those kind of actions, it is imperative for states to step up and actually defend women. It's, you know, I feel like there's a question of why now, because we have examples where the craziness is seeping into our state and our communities. This would be specific to state government documents. That All right, so that was a question about the federal government. It was a question about federal uh, buildings. Are they not going to be able to use these uh, words in these documents? And so she's clarifying that state government documents. We have the ability to monitor through an executive order.
I, I can't imagine why anybody would need to have incorrect information in a specific government form, but um, we could cross that bridge when we get there. This is if there's like any opt out exception or way in which a person could put those gender neutral terms on a state form. Um, again, this is people under their own request putting words down on a state form that best describes themselves. And they're making a law that bans that speech. This, I can't see how this won't get like a First Amendment fight against it. Like if you can just start banning language because you disagree with it, even though it accurately describes somebody, I, I'm I'm having a hard time with this. This is, I thought this is the party of freedom of speech, regardless of whether or not it hurts someone's feelings. This is very um, bizarre. And I hope that this does not come to my state. I am not from Arkansas. Um, but as soon as things start getting into one state government, uh, it will spread, right? We, we see that all the time. One state starts doing something, then they can use that as like, hey, we're going to use it. If it goes through the court system and it gets backed, then they can use it as precedent. Um, it gets really scary really fast for things like freedom of speech when you can start banning words because you disagree with them. Definited. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to sign the executive order now. Looks like it's one page. All right. Okay. So here is the executive order. Um, it's from governor.arkansas.gov executive order to eliminate woke anti-women words from state government and respect women. So whereas women are women, whereas an XX chromosome chromosome is an XX chromosome, that, that should be R. Th those are two chromosomes right there. So it is a little ironic that it says the science is clear and real. And it thinks that XX is a single chromosome. We'll just chalk that up for the thinking a pair of. Okay. There are th all things only women can do, like perform the miracle of birth. Government should reject language that ignores, undermines, and erases women. Government should celebrate gender distinctions between men and women, not erase them. So now this is this is um, dictating what people should do. This is defending, right? So like this this language would be like protecting. Uh, women from being erased. This is telling you what you ought to do from the government, uh, which would be more like government intervention. Um, and it is the policy of this administration to prohibit the use of woke anti-women words for official state government business. So prohibit. So this is banning speech, right? Now, therefore, I, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, acting under the authority vested in me as governor of the state of Arkansas, do hereby order all state offices, departments, boards, and commissions are prohibited from using exclusionary sexist language in official state government business effective immediately. Okay. There's a lot of vagueness here, but I think we could perhaps all be on board with not wanting to see in state government exclusionary sexist language. Um, but it leaves open a lot of doors as to what that could mean. In official government documents, the following exclusionary and sexist terms shall be replaced with accurate female affirming alternative alternatives. Rather than pregnant people, so that's the one we heard, or pregnant person, use pregnant women or pregnant mom. So if I'm choosing to call myself a pregnant person and not a pregnant woman, the state is saying I can't put that down. Um, but pregnant person would be actually more open and actually more accurate than pregnant 
woman, not necessarily a pregnant mom in from their perspective, but definitely more than pregnant women because women again was adult um, individuals and a child by legal definition can have uh, a pregnancy can, can give birth. Rather than chest feeding, use breastfeeding. I imagine it should actually be like mammary gland feeding if they wanted to be accurate. Um, but both men and women have chests and breasts. Uh, rather than body fed or person fed, I mean, even suits do, right? Um, rather than body fed or person fed, use breast fed. Okay, except it's not always coming from the breast, right? It could be pumped and put into a bottle and then is that person bottle fed or is it breast fed even though it's not accurate rather than human milk use breast milk but human milk is actually more accurate that's a like cow's milk right we don't call it i don't even know what right escapes me like what is that called right but we call it cow's milk it'd be cat's milk right for kittens it's the, the species and then milk that's the most accurate because tons of things have breasts. I don't know. That seems less accurate. A couple of these are. Rather than birthing person, use birth mom. Rather than laboring person, use birth mom. Rather than menstruating person or menstruating people, use woman or women. Rather than birth giver, use woman. Rather than woman, women or woman, these are aren't these from like the seventies? So it's generally from removing just the man part from woman. Okay, and it, it's definitely from seventies. Uh, we can kind of go back. Matt found in writing since nineteen seventies to avoid perceived sexism. Normally, I don't like Wikipedia, but this is probably a good. Um, option. Let's see. And there's clearly a lot of debate over whether or not it should be used or what it means. All right. But it's not new. What else do we have here? In testimony whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the great seal of the state of Arkansas to be affixed this 19th day of October in the year of our Lord 2023. Okay, so there is a lot wrong with the presentation of this executive order. Uh, it started off, I would say, fine from a conservative angle because they're like, hey, this is doing these things and people are being hurt by this uh, and we want to avoid that humiliation. Then they provided no really confidence building data surrounding someone being forced to use that language, the gender neutral terms nor um, about people who are genuinely hurt by it in any kind of legal sense, right? Um, and then just a few examples that were very vague, uh, starting with one and then moving to, oh, there were a few in the health department, okay? So let's trust all of that. Out of the entire state of Arkansas, there's a handful of people who were hurt by the language being used in the law. But as we saw from the law's information pregnant women was still being used it, it wasn't exclusive to pregnant people and it wasn't forced on people to use pregnant people it was just allowed and my guess would be that the reason why they want to remove that is because if you make state documents and state laws more inclusive you start to desensitize people to these terms they don't become as triggering for the conservative uh, body that exists and it becomes more acceptable in society to use these terms. And then that disallows them from saying those words without, uh, with kind of the uh, anger building process that it, they can count on right now, right? They can just say pregnant people and people will get upset. But in like five, 10 years from now, if that language was allowed to stay in the laws and many you know, state documents had it on there, people would just become okay with it. It wouldn't be a problem. And it still is accurate and it's scientifically more accurate than pregnant women if you're looking at the clear and precise definitions of these words. So I don't see how there's a problem. And there's a lot of danger in this, right? Because as soon as somebody can say that something um, is bad enough of a word that you can then ban it via an executive order, you are censoring 
speech. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.